Ooh, that's a good one. Hello everyone, my name is Julia Fernandez. I'm a design, fashion, and lifestyle content creator here on YouTube and on Instagram and sometimes on TikTok. So make sure to follow me in those platforms if you haven't already. Also connect with me on LinkedIn if you'd like to be a professional connections. I'm so excited to be back. I haven't sat down and filmed in front of a camera for about a month or so now. And there are a lot of things that I can talk about that have happened in this month and a lot of things that I need to update you all about that have have happened this month. But before I do a catch up session with you all, I thought it would be probably best for me to keep my word and start with my long awaited q and I sent out a post on LinkedIn on an Instagram literally two months ago asking you all to ask me questions and me promising you all to answer it on my channel. And so finally, here I am. The most important part is that we show up, so better late than ever. Thank you so much to everyone who has sent in questions. I am so happy happy that people even responded and like wanted to hear my answers. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my LinkedIn question. Izzy. Hi Izzy. They say, I'll get the ball rolling. Briefly walk us through your general video editing process and tools. You'd be a great streamer by the way. So with video editing, I use my camera, the Canon M50, and I use my Adobe Premiere account. I'm currently a student at the Academy of Art University, and something that's really awesome with our program is they give you a student license for all the years that you are a student there. So I have the whole Adobe Creative Cloud suite for free, and I use Premiere Pro because I feel like that's the most intuitive thing for me as someone who is used to using Adobe tools. I would think like that I would be a little bit more organized and planned with my videos, but a lot of my videos, especially in design diaries, have been very, very candid and just vlog type videos. And so in a perfect world, I would have kind of like a pre-written outline. I film it and then I go ahead and like try to use just one take. I cut out any of the unnecessary parts. When like when I say um a lot, I say um way too much and I swear my public speaking teacher would hate me for it, but I'm trying to be more aware and cautious and something that helps me motivate myself is to know that I'm probably gonna edit less. So yeah, um, <laughs> I just did it. That's a little very bird's eye view process of editing my videos. Also about streaming, if you want me to stream on IG Live or something, let me know in the comments down below. The next question is also from Izzy and they ask, what design tools have you had to use for your internships? So for my internship at Wish, I use Figma. Um, I feel like that's pretty standard for a lot of the places or <laughs> all of the places that are working from home. I also use Figma for my internship turned part-time job at Arcade and that's really, that's really it. I sometimes use Illustrator and InDesign on specific tasks depending on the actual content that I need to create and deliverables I need to create. Sometimes if we have to create decks for um, business development and so on, we will use Google Slides. But other than that, it's pretty much Figma. <laughs> and the final question from Izzy is, what is your most memorable on the job learning experience? Ooh, that's a good one. My most memorable on the job learning experience was probably when I was still an intern at Arcade and there was a meeting that we were having with a group of professionals and we just wanted to see how they use design tokens and kind of how they looked at their design system. And so it was really cool. We like asked them questions and everything and it was just like, oh, and it was really cool. I didn't know who these people were before I went into the meeting. And so lo and behold, the people in the meeting that I was in, and it was a very intimate meeting, it's literally four people from Arcade and I think also four or five people from the team that we were talking to in that company. And the people that were in the meeting afterwards, when I looked up their names, I was like, people in that meeting included Brad Frost, AKA the guy behind Atomic Design, Ian Frost, his brother, and Josh Clark, and all of them are really well respected people in the industry. And they were just like so chill and so cool. I don't know, it's like when you get starstruck, but like the aftermath of it, like the aftertaste of being starstruck. I wanna say the learning experience from that was really just like remembering that we're all humans, individuals. I feel like a lot of the time we tend to like put 
a face to a name and like put names on a pedestal but like I feel like something that's super beautiful about the design industry is the fact that you can just speak to a human like another human and not feel dumb or feel stupid and so it was just really awesome to be able to almost have like a private session where I learned from these minds of design and it's just so cool super cool next question is from Hinal and they say congratulations again Julia what advice would you give to someone like me who is transitioning from a software development background to UX design I am also going to actively start working on a portfolio soon and I would love some advice on discrete 101s first thing that I would say is like I I can't really speak empathetically because I am not coming from a software development background however However, I do have some friends who have been transitioning from software development into UX design. And honestly, I would say to own your history. I feel like own your identity of being a past software engineer, just like I have owned my identity as first starting out as a graphic designer transitioning into UX. And the reason behind that is because there are so many soft skills or so many skills that you can carry on from being a software developer or software engineer and bring it to make yourself stand out into UX. So whether it's like understanding what the engineers would want in a handoff file, understanding the language that you need to speak in order to get to the goals of the engineers that you will be working with anyway. I think it's so important just because you're going into a new career path doesn't mean that you suddenly have to be like, oh, software development, who is she? No, like own that, own your identity. And instead of like erasing the fact that you were a software engineer or software developer, own that and like emphasize it in the way that you learn UX and show your work in UX. With regard to creating your portfolio, I would highly, highly, highly recommend checking out cofolios.com. That is the place where I got inspiration for my portfolios. It actually has a bunch of different product design or UX design interns that have gotten into top tech companies. And it's just really cool to have North Stars as guidance to see how to build your portfolio. Something that I would say though, is that while you're looking at these stellar no pun intended, portfolios for guidance, I think it's also important to remember you're not trying to copy their templates, you're not trying to copy their designs, you're trying to look at them for inspiration. Another thing that's helped me tremendously is watching different videos on YouTube, specifically the one by Harrison Wheeler that I'm going to link down below that really helped me understand how to narrate the story of each case study on my portfolio. I'll also link down below in the description box other really great videos that I've seen that I I think might help you. The next question is from Christelle and they ask, congratulations, Julia. Thank you. Uh, what are your self care tips for managing your workload and dealing with the job search process? Oh, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not the best person to ask this just because I have fallen into so many workaholic traps where I just keep working until I go to sleep. I wake up, do work, go to sleep. And it just becomes this like monotonous cycle. And I hate that. I hate it. And so when I see myself or when I catch myself going into those cycles, this is what I typically do on a good day. So just going to preface that, that this is not the usual thing that will happen to me when I try to balance my work. When I do recognize that I'm going down into this rabbit hole of work, what I do is I make sure to set up a really good morning routine and a night routine. If I can get up in the morning and bundle my habits, I try to wake up at like seven and then get to work at nine. So from seven to nine is kind of like my holy morning routine ritual time. I have a habit tracker and all of these habits are listed down. I make sure to at least have that morning routine for me to look forward to because I know that that time is sacred and that time is my own and not for my work. I found a really huge cor correlation to if I'm doing my morning routine completely and how I'm feeling mentally and physically. I can definitely feel that this kind of routine has helped me ground myself in days that I have to work until I have to go to sleep. So find that routine, whether it's a morning routine, night routine, or even an afternoon lunch routine, because I feel like just having that time that is just for yourself and nobody else is so crucial. And sometimes you have to be selfish. You're giving yourself to all of your work. So have that time, have that two hours, that hour or whatever hours you can have to yourself and enjoy it. Yongchi asks, what is one piece of advice you would have given yourself early on in your design journey? 
That's a good question. I would say to stop being scared of asking questions. That does sound cliche now that I say it out loud, but it's not even being afraid of asking questions, but being proud to ask questions because I have found that the managers that I've worked with and colleagues that I've worked with actually have commended me a lot by being curious and, you know, having no idea and still being not afraid to ask the questions. Because most of the time when you ask a question uh, in front of a group, you're actually benefiting the other people that may have not understood, you know, what the instructions were or what the expectations were. Asking questions and being able to get rid of whatever ambiguity, whether it's in deliverables, in uh, meetings, and so on will just save you so much time and is more efficient in the long run. And so I would say be proud of being curious. Shinar doesn't have a question, but she says, congratulations. Thanks, Shinar. And Mayur asks, hey, would it be great to hear how you organize your to-do list and prioritize? Personally, I use GTDs, but I'm curious what you do. I actually have a problem of keeping too many to-do lists like spread around my room, whether it's like on my whiteboard or on my notes tab in my phone or on my bullet journal or in my daily agenda. Sometimes I'm all over the place, but for the most part I've seen in order to prevent myself from feeling like all over the place I try to stay to my planner. So this is my planner from Papier. I really love this planner because I was able to customize it. It has my name, has Grow and um, Spring 2021. And essentially for every day it looks like this and you are able to write down your schedule, write down your to-do list and most important priorities, and then you have a space for notes here. And paper is my best friend in these times because there's something really satisfying about checking something off or like filling in that dot next to your to-do list. And trust me, I have tried having a to-do list on my, on my iPad and on Notion, but when it comes to like action tasks that I need to do for myself, no matter how small, I found just writing things down is the best way to go. All right, so I didn't realize how long this video was gonna be. So this is my little outro to end part one of my Q&A. Make sure to check out part two of this Q&A, which covers the questions that I got from Instagram. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video.